Hello, my name is Alison Collar de Beaufort. I attended the Buenos Aires Argentina Project Center in E-Term 2019, and my project is a study of traffic safety in Argentina with a focus on Buenos Aires. The issue of road safety is a global one, killing 1.35 million people on average each year, making it the eighth cause of death in the world. It is also the leading cause of death for those ages 5 to 29, both worldwide and within the United States. I have had to face this fact head on as three of my friends and classmates were killed by reckless drivers over the span of 15 months during my eighth and ninth grade years. Road safety is such a big issue that the United Nations declared a decade of action for road safety for 2011 to 2020 and then renewed it for 2021 to 2030. Because of my personal ties to the issue, traffic safety is always one of my top priorities. Thus, I couldn't help but make some observations during my time in Buenos Aires. First off, I was impressed that drivers slowed down at the orange light instead of speeding up, unlike in New York City where I'm from. However, the public buses were terrifying, not even waiting for passengers to fully get on or off before driving away again. What I have pictured here is the Avenida 9 de Julio, which is simply impossible to cross in one go unless you sprint. My observations, along with my dedication to the issue, solidified my choice of topic for my research project. Along with online research, I also wanted to learn more about the issue and efforts being made to address it straight from the source. So I reached out to some of my contacts who were able to connect me with various agencies in Argentina. From there, I was able to meet with both the National Agency for Road Safety and the City of Buenos Aires' Secretary of Transportation Road Safety Observatory, both of which also gave me access to their data, reports, analysis, studies, and conferences, two of which are pictured on this slide. One of the studies done by the National Agency for Road Safety gauged Argentinians' view on the issue of road safety along with their habits. Data from this study is pictured here and showed that even though Argentinians are worried about road safety, nine out of 10 people said this, and that they know of the risks, many of them still don't take proper precautions. For example, 98% of respondents said that not using seatbelts is a huge risk, but only 75% use them always or almost always. 84% of respondents know that not respecting stoplights is an issue, but 64% always or almost always follow them. Another study showed that older age groups, 50 to 75 year olds, were more worried about the issue than younger people, 16 to 29 and 30 to 49 year olds. And motorcyclists were almost double more worried than pedestrians or drivers. Thus, it is clear that traffic violence is a predominant issue in Argentina and a concern for many. To contrast these statistics, Argentina has taken huge measures to handle the issue. Argentina has a no-phones law for both handheld and hands-free devices. Out of 175 countries, Argentina is one of 80 to have laws for speed limits, drunk driving, helmets, seatbelts, and child seats, and is one of 61 to have a dedicated traffic safety organization, La Agencia Nacional de Seguridad Vial. The federal government also approved a law establishing mandatory traffic safety education programs in elementary, middle, and high schools. Argentina has various penal codes for traffic violations in both their transit laws and national penal code laws. Additionally, the World Bank sponsored a program in partnership with the federal government, which was defined by six objectives, including strengthening management through the development of national registry systems, bettering emergency services, creating a fund for local road safety projects, and assisting the National Road Safety Observatory. Some results of this program include over 4,600 traffic safety campaigns and technical assistance to almost 150 jurisdictions in 24 provinces of the country. Now onto Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is massive and even has the largest avenue in the world, Avenida 9 de Julio. For reference, it's 460 feet wide and has nine lanes each way. In 2017, 56% of road deaths in Buenos Aires occurred on large avenues. 23% on streets and 21% on highways. In 2018, the rate of deaths on large avenues increased to 62%. The age group of 20 to 34 year olds were those most affected during the period of 2010 to 2018. In 2014, they represented more than 50% of those killed and 40% in, and in 2018. The map on the left depicts deaths in the city by mode of transportation, blue for cars, red for pedestrians, and so on. The map on the right shows where deaths have occurred and these stars exist in person on posters put up around the city by the victim's loved ones as an awareness campaign. I was also intrigued by the city's public buses during my initial observations, but they are actually not run by the city. They are a private company subsidized by the city, meaning the drivers are protected by unions and usually can't be punished if they commit an infraction. During my meeting with the city's secretary of transportation office, 
I learned that because of a previous lack of resources, data trends are hard to identify. The city's database is new, meaning that there is no way to know if someone has been stopped or fined for the same reason multiple times, which also means there is not enough data to determine if there is a reduction in speed infractions after the first violation. Furthermore, while the city uses speed safety cameras, the city says it takes too long for the fines to reach the drivers. By the time they receive the fine, they've forgotten about what they did wrong, they just pay it and move on without learning from it. The city of Buenos Aires is well aware of these issues and has carried out many efforts to reduce risks. First, Buenos Aires has a variety of pedestrian-only streets and areas, including the iconic Calle Florida and Puerto Madero, and various weekly street markets such as the one pictured on the left. Pictured on the right is the subte, the underground subway system, and from what I experienced, it is extremely efficient. Thanks to a reliable subway system, people are likely to be more inclined to use it instead of driving around. Buenos Aires is also home to various dedicated traffic safety organizations and nonprofits. One of them, Luchemos por la Vida, conducts studies, public service announcements, and creates partnerships for educational programs. Finally, the Buenos Aires government partnered with Bloomberg Philanthropy. Bloomberg Philanthropy's Global Road Safety Initiative, which focuses on low and middle income countries. Buenos Aires was, was chosen under the category reducing drunk driving. Having learned about Buenos Aires' efforts, I was interested in comparing them to what other cities are doing. First is Sweden's Vision Zero Initiative created in 1997. The Vision Zero Initiative, as indicated by its name, is the goal of reducing traffic deaths and serious injuries to zero. Today, it has been adopted by countries across the world and over 40 cities in the United States, including New York City. New York City has also implemented lower citywide speed limits and speed safety cameras in school zones. Additionally, like Buenos Aires, New York City is home to organizations such as Families for Safe Streets and the Vision Zero Youth Council. Similarly, New York City and Paris have also created more pedestrian-only streets, such as New York City's Summer Streets Program, and Paris's Seine River Walkway has been car-free since 2016. I highly recommend taking a look at a road safety campaign organized by the Road Safety Authority of Paris called the Virtual Crash Billboard, pictured on the right. Using a sensor, the sound of a car braking was played when a person jaywalked, to which their reaction was photographed and displayed on the billboard. Traffic safety is a multifaceted problem and does not have just one solution. Countries have a lot to learn from each other, so these international dialogues are critical. Such dialogues include the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety, whose name speaks for itself. The UN Decades of Action and Road Safety for, and Sustainable Development Goals provide frameworks for decision makers, activists, and city developers. While Argentina and Buenos Aires are great examples that other Latin American countries can look, look up to for inspiration, they also stand to benefit from these international dialogues. Based on these global conversations, research, and my observations, I have developed two suggestions for Buenos Aires. First, the city could test strategic car-free areas by experimenting with weekly or monthly pedestrian-only areas, analyzing social, environmental, economic, and safety impacts from these car-free spaces could allow the city to identify which locations stand to benefit most without permanently redesigning traffic flow. Secondly, I previously discussed that a majority of deaths in Buenos Aires occurred on large avenues. Thus, Buenos Aires could adopt various alternatives, like changing the speed limit, reducing lanes, and or adding pedestrian islands, crosswalks, and bike-only lanes. This could also go hand in hand with my first suggestion. As I mentioned previously, the city is well aware of the specific issues it faces. Buenos Aires has proved itself to be a leader in and dedicated to traffic safety efforts, and I'm highly optimistic that they will find a combination of solutions that work for them. The issue of traffic violence has not been solved or gone away since my trip to Buenos Aires. In February of 2020, a few months after I returned from Argentina, I had the wonderful opportunity to travel to Stockholm, Sweden to attend the Second World Youth Assembly for Road Safety on the left and the Third Global Ministerial Conference on Road Safety on the right as a youth representative for the United States. In the picture on the right, I am standing with my friend Katarina, the youth representative from Argentina, and two women from Argentina's National Road Safety Agency. To conclude, I am very thankful to have had the opportunity to study a topic I am so passionate about, and working on this project through WPI's Buenos Aires Project Center has helped reinforce my hope for the future. While technically, uh, I have technically completed this project, Vision Zero has not yet been reached, so I don't plan on backing away from my commitment to the issue until it is. Thank you so much for your time and attention.